Well, guys, you got close, but I'm not going to cry on the air. Uh, thank you so much for that. I'm a little disappointed Aaron Rodgers wasn't part of it, but other than that, it was all cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just I, I feel like I'm back home again. And uh, it is so good to be here. And uh, uh, before anything else, uh, I just the, the number of people, it's just it, it's mind boggling. I, I can't, you know, even understand it, you know, who've been so kind and, and, and reached out just with thoughts and concerns and well wishes. And I just can't thank everybody enough. And, uh, um, you know, it's just it's great to be back home. And, and, and that's where I feel like I am right now. And great to visit with you guys tonight, too. God, you sound good, Hub. Sound really, really good. It's so great to hear your voice. And, and, and you know, it, it's funny. All those listeners that you've heard from that we, as Danny said, every day, people texting, hey, can I get an update on Hub? Can I get an update? And right now, the text line overflowing and, and all our Twitter mentions and everything. It's funny because you go through a radio career, and for you, it's more than just radio, but in this place, you deal with a lot of people who tell you negative stuff. Some tell you positive stuff, but all these people who might have said negative things at a certain point, you realize that they enjoyed you. They they missed you now. They loved you. And it was like, it's always been a closeness there, even when they've been negative all these years. Isn't that funny? It is. And, and you know, interestingly enough, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of what I've learned in, in the last four and a half months. And, you know, yeah, okay, a lot of it's been difficult. Enough of that. Everybody goes through stuff. Um uh, but, you know, having never gone through anything like this, and, and I hope nobody else ever does have to, but we know some folks will, the thing you don't realize is that it's, it's, it's really harder on other people than it is on yourself. I, I mean, the, the nightmare that my family and my wife and my kids and grandkids have been through these last four and a half months and, and, and the strength and, and courage and everything that they've showed. And, you know, they, they, they saved my life and they walked me through. And, and yet there's been many times when they're the ones who, who've needed the help. And so for anybody who goes through anything like this, just know that, you know, it's so hard on your family and, and, and you have to make sure that no matter what you're going through, that you find a way to try and at least help and take care of them too. And uh, whether it's family or friends uh, or it's my family at the score, my family with the Bears, my family at Shaw Media, my family at Pro Football Weekly. Uh, I just can't thank everybody enough. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Well, you, you mentioned your family at the Bears, Hub. Um, you know, I think a lot of us learned some of the details in the stories that have come out this week. I mean, John Tarpey, Vice President yeah. of Security, what, what an yeah. unbelievable story. Uh, how the Bears rushed to your aid at Hallis Hall. Yeah, we, we got to talk a few weeks ago, finally. It was one of the most important calls I was waiting to be able to have. And and he won't take credit for it. He's just, he's that kind of guy. But John saved my life. Uh, I mean, you know, like I said, it was pretty bad. And, and And had he not been there when he was and done what he did and, and organized the team that he put together who, who took care of all this. And, and by the way, guys, I, I don't even know a lot of what happened. I, I, I was in the hospital for two and a half months. I don't remember a second of it. it. It just, and I'm told that that's fairly common, but what I, what I've learned since, you know, mainly through my family and other folks with the bears is that, that John saved my life, you know, you know and, and, um, uh, how do you thank anybody enough for that? Yeah, and I, I have to go a step further, too, guys, because, you know, we've all had our, our time in our businesses and our lives and what we do, and, and there's good and bad that comes with everything. And, and you know, the Bears uh, at times, you know, I, I've had to report negatively. Uh, at times they've been criticized. What the entire Bears organization has done in reaching out to me and trying to help take care of us, uh, and how kind they've been. And I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about ownership, coaches, uh, you know, front office, uh, um, and, and the number of players who've reached out to me, which I never in my worst dreams imagined was going to happen. And, and the Chicago Bears are a truly special organization, truly special business. And, and, and it has been nothing but positive with them. And, and that's not something that I knew was going to happen, you know, and you don't expect stuff like that. And there's times, you know, because it's sports and it's fun and it's okay to, you know, be a smart ass sometimes and do this and do that. And, 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 you know, we've been hard on them, but, but they're such special people and, and what they've done for me and my family the last four and a half months. I just cannot say enough about the Chicago Bears. 
You're listening to the great Hub Arkish on with Parkinson and Spiegel here on 670 The Score. It's beautiful to hear about the Bears stepping up as an organization. We've seen that. And as Danny mentioned, some of those details in there about about John Tarpey and then, you know, an assistant gets on the golf cart and goes to get the defibrillator, which is passed to him by another assistant. And meanwhile, of course, 911 is being called and everybody working together like that. It's and they all knew you. They, they all knew you, huh? But it's like there, there's so many. You've been such a, a stable part of the scene for so, so long. And so, of course, everybody at Hallis Hall knew you and the beat guys uh, knew you and everybody kind of kind of rallied. I hope you feel that sense of community that can be elusive sometimes as everybody goes through your day to day. But you you have built community and family in in lots of different avenues in your life. I hope you feel that these days. Well, I, you know, honestly, guys, I, I've never been anything but lucky, you know, and, and, and I'd rather be lucky than good, and it worked out for me. So, um, but, you know, I have done it for a long time. This will be my, uh, when I get back, and, and right now the, the target and the plan is hopefully for the beginning of our draft coverage in February, the, you know, the doctors are giving me a hard time about not going too soon, but it'll be 45 years, you, you know, and, and you meet a lot of people and, and, and you make a lot of friends. And um, uh, even with that, it just, how, how good people are, you know, we're going through a time in our lives with politics and, 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 and other stuff that's going on. And, and, and I think that, you know, it's kind of sad that there is as much, anger as there is in so many areas with so many different things. And, and, and I don't know if we really think about for the most part, just how good people are and, and, and the overwhelming majority of the folks that, that certainly, well, we know this with the folks that we work with, you know, it's, it's, uh, the score and everywhere else. I mean, I mean, but you know, people are genuinely good you know? and, 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 and the majority of people that I've known in my life, have reached out and, and tried to help in every way that I've, you know, dealt with them over the last 45 years. And, um, you know, you go through something like this and you learn a lot and you probably get a little too emotional and, you know, uh, uh, a little too talkative and think, you know, things that you don't know. Uh, but, but what I have learned in the last four and a half months is that basically people are good, you know, and, and people want to do the right thing. And, and when the time comes, people reach out and they do what they can to help and to take care of others. And, and, and we're just all really lucky to, to live where we do and be with the people we are and to, uh, you know, to just to have the, the, the people taking care of us that we do because we'd be lost without them. Hub, you mentioned uh, your wife and your kids and your grandkids. What was the reunion like with uh, your beloved Golden Retrievers? <laughs> uh they're both sitting here right now they've each got one leg and uh, uh it was one of the hardest parts to be honest with you because the doctors wouldn't let me have them for uh i don't want to go into the medicals it's not that important but one of the things that happens with this is that in one of the ways that, that john saved me was they had to break all my ribs to get things working again and then of course there was a long surgery and you know they healed all that and because of that um, I was on, uh, I don't know what you would call this, but basically not allowed to use my arms, couldn't lift more than five pounds. And so my daughter had to take the dogs for three months. And, and in some respects, it was the hardest part of all this. Obviously, the guys who know me know I'm nutty about this. Um, and I didn't get them back until about four or five weeks ago. And uh, it was it's really been interesting because, you know, they were gone for almost four months. And yet the moment they came back, it was like they almost suffered more than I did. And uh, they have been glued to me ever since. And uh, it is, uh, it's special. You know, it's, it's just another part of this that, to, that you learn about. And, and I know there's a lot of dog lovers out there, and I know you understand this. And uh, like I said, right now, the two of them, each one's laying on one of the feet. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, yeah, again, helped with the, uh, the rehab and, and everything that we've gone through. And it just makes life better. Hub Arkish sounding so great right here on 670 The Score. That's the overwhelming thought on the text lines is like, oh, my God, Hub sounds great. It's so good. People so excited to hear you. Um, wondering, Hub, if if during your your recovery, you've kind of had some time to just sit around and watch football like the rest of us. Like, I mean, it's, <laughs> you, you work so closely in it for 45 yeah. years. Have you and, and Arthur, who's in the business, and, and other members of your family, have, 
if you had a chance, just watch, was it was it kind of fun or was it frustrating to watch football? What was it like? No, it, it, it's a good question, and I'm not even sure what the right answer is. Uh, again, the first three, three and a half months or so, there was no football. There was I, I don't remember two and a half months of it. Uh, and then the, the, a lot of things that the doctors just didn't want me doing or trying to do. Um, so I missed the start of the season. And then when I got out of the hospital, that was about two and a half months. I had three weeks of inpatient uh, therapy at uh, Shirley Ryan. And, and by the way, uh, the, the doctors and, and the people at Shirley Ryan and the hospital, and again, I, I just can't say enough about the care that they've taken of me and, and the kindness and goodness that they've sent. Uh, but the one thing I was really pissed at them for was they, they wouldn't let me do certain things like have the dogs. Like, you know, I, I'm not allowed to drive. I'm still not allowed to drive a car. That is hard, too. And and they, they didn't think that really trying to watch football or study or learn or anything was a good idea for a while. So I finally saw my first game. It was, it was uh, uh, I've seen five games, so whatever that was. I know they were off this week. And it was interesting because one of the things that happens with something like this is that memory disappears. And, and there's a lot from the last two years or so that I'm really struggling with. But not the football. From from the first game that Arthur and I sat and watched, um, and it was that awful twelve to seven loss. I can't remember who they lost to. Washington. Uh, Washington. I felt bad yeah, when I read that was your first game back. I was like, oh, yeah. that's like the the worst game of the year. <laughs> it was ugly. Yeah, it was really ugly. Um, and yet, what was interesting about it to me is I knew exactly what was going on. I knew why it was ugly. I could see the mistakes being made, and and for everything else that I couldn't remember. I guess you do this for 45 years, and that stays with you. And the football part, and then each week since then, it's just gotten better and better. And one of the things, uh, you know, Sean was worried that they were going to put me on the spot and let's not talk football. I, I've, I've watched enough now and studied enough and remember enough that I know where this team is at. And I know everybody's talking about Justin Fields. And, and guys, I have another message for everybody. Back off. Take your time. Mm-hmm. Be careful, Okay. I'm excited about the possibilities for this young man. I think there's a good chance he's the best running quarterback in the NFL right now, but he is not even an average passer yet. And you don't win every week in the NFL if your quarterback is not more than an average passer. I'm encouraged by what I've seen. I think there's a good chance that he is going to be a very good quarterback. But I think people have gone so over the top of where the kid's at right now um, that it's not realistic, and I hope that they're not putting too much pressure on him because he's got a long way to go uh, before before he is the future of the Chicago Bears. He's back! He's back, he's baby! He's back, baby! <laughs> I now, love it. Now oh. he's back. Now oh. he's back. Oh, God, oh, he's God. back. That's so good. Um, <laughs> okay. It's yeah, understandable. Good perspective. Good, per- <laughs> Gentle counterpoint, if I may. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, gentle. Um, arguably worst pass-protecting offensive line. Uh, spent less money on receivers than, than any team in the NFL. You know, they score 29 against the Cowboys. Vikings were able to score three, score 32 against the Dolphins, score 30 against the Lions. Like, he is producing. Yes, it's not all passing, though the the Packers game last week was certainly a pretty complete uh, passing game. It feels uh, to me, Hub, like the projection, it's not a leap to say if he can produce – put the ball in the end zone, the big plays, the 50-plus yard plays, which some have been through the air, some have been on the ground, if he can produce with this little around him in his first year in Luke Getze's offense, just imagine what he could produce second year in the offense, third year in the offense with more pieces around him. That doesn't feel like a big leap to me. No, that's a great point. And again, I, I, I hope I'm being clear. I am not negative in any way about Justin Fields. I, I think it's exciting. I think it's encouraging. I'm just worried about how far people have gone far too quickly in some of their talk and, you know, and coverage of him. And, and, and they're ignoring the fact that he does still have a lot to learn. But yes, I, 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 I am a big Eberflus fan, uh, you know, and, and we, we, we started to get to know each other. Uh, a little bit before this happened. It was only about four or five months. He was incredible reaching out to Arthur to check on me. He didn't really even know me all that well. Um, and, and I like a lot of what he's doing with this football team. And, and I think people have to understand is that this was the plan. 
the Bears decided, and, and many teams and other sports do this, is that the way to get better is first you get worse. You clean clock. You get rid of everything, and you put yourself in a position to have the tools to to both buy and, and, and figure out what you need and then go get it. That's what the Bears are doing. The Bears have never done this before, guys. I've been covering them for 45 years, and, and, and this is the first time that they're going through a complete rebuild, and this is what it looks like. And I think that some of what they've shown on offense going through this is very impressive. Uh, but, but, but people just need to understand what the time frame is on something like this. And they've got a lot of talent they got to go find. They've already got some impressive young talent that still has a lot to learn. And it isn't going to happen you know, between now and the end of the season, obviously. And it isn't going to happen next year. I, they're going to be better next year. But anybody who thinks they're going to be competing next year is kidding themselves. I, I think it's great that they have all this cap space. I hope they spend it wisely and don't go out and spend it all because that's too soon. But I think that, that, that they've got the right people in place right now with what they've done so far. And I think that there's a good chance that by the second half of next year, there could be some stuff to get legitimately excited about. You know what's very interesting, Hub, is that we find ourselves, the Bears and the Bears media and the Bears fans, right at the the right in the middle of this evolving league with quarterbacks like this. We'll mm-hmm. see Justin mm-hmm. Fields, we'll see Josh Allen the next two weeks. Um, we'll see Jalen Hurts, and like it's so interesting. Is it an acceptable starting point to establish the run with a quarterback? as your franchise guy and then hope the passing game evolves like this is not the only franchise doing it it's all over the league and it it's making schematics guys crazy because it's not as complicated a a passing game right it's the game is changing before our eyes it seems yeah there's no question that the, the, the league is changing and, you know, guys, I, I, again, I'm going to go off uh, uh, the cuff now, but I think a part of this is how much of everything has changed with COVID, you, you know, and just health and, and the difference in the way all businesses have been run the last year and a half or two. And, and the amount of young talent uh, that is emerging throughout the league, not just with the Chicago Bears, and the way a lot of the guys who've been our favorites for the last five, eight, nine years are all kind of starting to come apart at once. Uh, it's just a combination of the different world that we live in right now. And as it relates to football, and to your point, it, yeah, I, I have no issue with what they're doing now. And, and I couldn't be more excited about watching Justin Fields run every time he takes off with the ball. I just think that you, what you have to be careful with, don't let him run too much. This has started to become a conversation now because you cannot keep your quarterback healthy if he's running the football 10, 12, 15 times a game. And it also it gets in the way of his development as a passer. It gets in the way of his mental development as a quarterback and the leader of this football team to understand the most important things that he has to do to eventually, you know, be quarterbacking and leading a Super Bowl team. And and I think that I, I think Everfuss gets that, you know, you know, and I'm impressed with the staff he's put together. And uh, now they just have to do the work and succeed at the work. Um, and the only point I was trying to make that I suppose probably sounded a little negative is that the coverage uh, of fields a little so far, I just think has been too over the top. I, I, I just read some of this stuff where he's listed as one of the top five quarterbacks in the league and this and that. He's not that yet. He might be. I hope he can because he's also an impressive young man. Um, but but it's just it's a weird way to be a Bears fan right now and to figure out what you enjoy and what you're going to be upset about. And I think everybody just has to be patient. Let's hope they win a couple games before the season ends. And uh, I can't wait to see what they do in free agency. Well, Hub, we cannot wait for that as well. Um... We cannot wait till you're back full time, whenever that is, whenever you feel comfortable and the doctors let you go, hopefully, like you said, around the draft. But we had Arthur on uh, for the first Tuesday at five because it just didn't feel right to not have an Arkish in that (laughs) spot uh, the first Tuesday at five of the regular season. But Tuesday at five is open. And any time, of course, is open to you at this radio station across all shows. You know that. But if you ever you know, hear something that we say that you disagree with or you want to talk Bears, you want to get some analysis off between now and then, 
open invitation. I hope you know that. And uh, it, it's so good to hear your voice. Our audience is completely overjoyed. Olin Krutz is tweeting about it. We had Pat Manley uh, on an hour ago. He was like, I don't even want to be on right now. I just want to get to the point where Hub is on. So everyone's just so thrilled to have you back. And we hope that we get to talk Bears with you uh, before February. But whenever you're ready, open invitation, okay? Yeah, you know, guys, Mitch and I have been talking a little bit. We're, we're starting to figure this out. Uh, I, I'm going to be back long before February. I'm just talking about getting back to 100%. Okay. And, uh, um, uh, again, to me, the most important part is I, I just can't thank everybody enough. I, you just, you, you know, you never prepare for something like this. And, and you know, I, I, I've just thought about what would happen because I never thought it would happen. Um, and I, I'm just absolutely taken apart, floored by how kind so many people, I mean, I knew about you guys and, and all our friends in the business and, 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 and my family, and, and, their, and I knew about the Bears, but, but our listeners and, 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 and people out there who I've never met, who've reached out and sent cards and sent letters, I, I just, I can't possibly say thank you enough. I, I do also very quickly, and I hope this isn't a, a tough thing, but Dan, I know you've had a tough time too, and uh, I've been thinking about you, and, and I hope you know you and your family are doing well. And uh, thank you know, you. We all go on and learn from these things, and, and I think we all try and be better people after it happens, and I'll do what I can to get there. I don't know if that'll happen, <laughs> but I'll try. And uh, guys, thank you so much for having me tonight. Hub, th- thank you so much for the kind words. That was that was very kind. Uh, yeah, it's it's been tough, and it'll continue to be tough. But uh, you know, you, we do what we do, and it's nice to be supported by family and friends. And uh, you're a part of the Score family. Hey, Hub, uh, yeah, and- that 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 lesson that you've learned and shared about the goodness of people, and realizing that so many people are good and have been good, keep sharing that. That that was valuable to hear spiritually, frankly. And I'm, it's it's a valuable thing for you to share. So thanks for doing it. That. It's well, thank you. And, and again, I'm I'm trying to be careful and not overstep my bounds and think that people care what I have to say about things that aren't football. But I just it's been a big part of my life the last four or five months, and it's going to be a bigger part for however long I make it, whether it's a couple more weeks or a couple more years, <laughs> whatever it may be. Uh, but uh, guys, this has been great, and uh, uh, I hope to be back real soon, and we'll get back to talking more football and less me that that would be ideal 